of a... <laughs> your name is Toby. Now tell me I'm your name. Him, sir. That's not your name. <laughs> Toby's your name. Now what is your name? Toby's your name. Now I'll ask you again. Tell me your name. Shut it! Shut it! Will not move from here till you say your name. Not if night falls or a new day comes. Now you will say Toby. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. I'm what I heard, my boy. Please. I'm here. No, Benta. I can't see our boy. I've looked for him everywhere. He isn't coming home. Say it! Say it! Say it! Say it! Say your name. Your owner's wife chose for you. Say your name. So you know this ain't Africa. This is Virginia. And you're the property of John Waller. Like the horses and hogs. Nothing more. Say your name so you know what you are. Say it! Say it! Say it! Say your name! Say it! Say Toby! Tell me your name! Say it, damn you! Say Toby! Just say your name! He said... He said... Say it again, louder. What's your name? What's your name? The name is the fulcrum of what Christianity is about. Everyone who was a Christian was taught that his name is higher than any other name. It is the name that is the motivating belief and practice of Christianity. That name is considered the holy grail of what Christians believe and practice. The name Jesus Christ. But before we go into the name Jesus Christ, I want you to consider it this way. Number one, all black people born in America in the 20th century more than likely has a name that was given to them by their parents. That would be from the years 1900 through 1999. Number two, all black people born in America in the 21st century more than likely has a name given to them by their parents. Now, shifting factual gears a little and covering the years 1619 through the 1800s, all black people born in America had a name more than likely given to them by their oppressor, the slave owner, the massa, the white plantation king. Those are the irrefutable facts. It is also a fact the surname of most, if not all, blacks come from the oppressor, the slave owner, the massa, the white plantation king. These are just facts, void of any racial innuendos or racially motivated feelings. Toby! It's Toby! Now say it! Toby! Do not forget this scene because the introduction to Christianity was literally beat into the slaves during the transatlantic slave trade. Just like our names were beat into our ancestors during the transatlantic slave trade. Now before I delve further into the name Jesus Christ, the next few images show the actual names of slaves on the manifest of many of the ships that brought them to the land of their captivity. The following information is taken from www.disciplesoftheway.ministries.org. 
and I highly recommend and encourage you to do your own research. But notice the names of many of the Hebrew slaves all incorporate in some way the name of the Most High, Elohim Yah. This is not a coincidence. It is the facts as they existed in the 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th century. Ale, ya ma, aya, eyugun ya, o ya jomi, o ya to, ya na, of ya, ya oi, o ya, ya da dai, o ya ma ya, o no ya, amani ya. In the ya, na ya, for ya. The original names of the captives clearly reflect the name of their Elohim, ya. Their names alone reveal their heritage, the religion, and their Elohim, the Most High, Yahweh. When you hear a name of someone, Immediately you have conjured up feelings about that someone and their name. For instance, Jesus. Every single Christian feels a certain way about the name Jesus. And when that name is mentioned, these beliefs and feelings are ignited. Love, kindness, gentleness, salvation. You shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 21. But on the other hand, in the year 1562, all the way through the 1800s, this is how the Hebrew slaves reacted to the name Jesus. Horror, despair, suffering, slavery, torture, captivity because the first British slave ship to reach the Americas was known as the good ship Jesus. King Henry VIII first purchased the 700 ton vessel, then christened Jesus of Lubeck from Lübeck in Germany. In 1562, Queen Elizabeth agreed to let John Hawkins use the moldering ship for his excursion. A deeply religious gentleman, Hawkins insisted that his crew serve God daily and love one another as he sailed his ship for Africa. In a short time, he had gathered up over 300 Africans, partly by sword and partly by other means. The other means included promising them free land and riches in the new world. Interesting that Hawkins had been granted permission to carry Africans to the Americas with the distinct understanding that it would only be with their own free consent. Still, he returned home with a handsome profit and ships laden with ivory, hides, and sugar. Queen Elizabeth was livid. She insisted Hawkins' new business was absolutely detestable and would certainly call down vengeance from heaven until she realized how profitable it was, that is. Then she quickly changed her tune and joined Hawkins as a full partner. Soon, the new slave ship became known as the Good Ship Jesus. In 1567, the good ship Jesus and five other ships on yet another slaving expedition came up against the Spaniards at San Juan Ula in New Spain, Mexico. Since the slave trade was still illegal, it was the habit of Spanish colonists to provoke the British ships into a charade of force. After a fair show, they would drop the pretense and buy slaves at a discount. But this time, the Spanish attacked the British ships, the good ship Jesus, old and cumbersome, sank, and the crew were slaughtered. 
Hawkins escape with his cousin, Sir Francis Drake. Hawkins then returned to England, where he remained in the service of the Queen. In 1588, after gaining distinction for his pivotal role in defeating the Spanish Armada, he was knighted Sir John Hawkins. This information reveals that Christianity and slavery were two halves of a whole religion that was forced by conquest, torture, beatings, and death over the Hebrew slaves. But scripture already revealed the actions of the oppressor and the demise of the Hebrew. Because you did not serve Yahweh, your Elohim, with joy and gladness of heart, for all the plenty you shall serve your enemies whom Yahweh sends against you in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in need of all. And he shall put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. Yahweh brings a nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose language you shall not understand, a fierce-looking nation which shows no regard for the elderly or show favor to the young. And they shall eat the fruit of your livestock and the fruit of your land until you are destroyed. They leave you no grain, nor new wine, nor oil, nor the increase of your cattle, or the offspring of your flocks, until they have destroyed you. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, as the saying goes, of how methodically calculating the ancestry Hebrews was introduced to Christianity. In part three of this teaching, we will examine more thoroughly the name Jesus Christ, both linguistically and textually. This is H.S. Yaakov, his bondservant and watchman. Shalom wa barawak ak wa akwa. Always to the esteem of the Most High, Elohim Yah.